Hello and welcome to the big picture. With the elections to the Constituent Assembly in Nepal scheduled for November 19th, less than a week away, all eyes are on the Himalayan nation. The campaign which has been marred by boycott of the elections by 33 parties and violence being reported from several places is not boding well for free and fair polls. Justice Kilraj Regmi, who heads the electoral government since last year, after the previous constituent assembly term ended after failing to draw up a constitution, has been under tremendous pressure. His refusal to resign as the Chief Justice of the Nepal Supreme Court while holding office of an interim Prime Minister has led to the boycott by the 33 parties. With the international pressure to go ahead with elections despite the boycott and unrest, there are several question marks over the legitimacy of the elections. However, there the Himalayan nation seems to be headed to go ahead and conduct, conduct the elections. Today we will discuss what's happening in Nepal and how the elections will pan out and whether it will end the uncertainty in the nation. To discuss this, I have with me Veena Sikri, former ambassador, Dr. Baladas Goshal, senior fellow at the Center for Policy Research, retired Major General Ashok Mehta, a defense and security analyst, and on the phone line from Kathmandu is veteran journalist Yubraj Gimre, editor, the reporter, and an English weekly from Nepal. Welcome to all of you. Veena Sikri, I would like to come to you first. Mm. This, these elections, you know, the India seems to have played qu quite a bit of a role in uh, ensuring that these elections, are, you know, are go gone ahead. You think that that we have the in India has done the right thing by pressing for elections at this stage, despite all the uncertainty and unrest. I think that uh, elections are the most important need of the hour in Nepal. Let us just recall for a moment uh, what has been happening in Nepal since 2008, when the first constituent assembly uh, was elected. Right. I think that they have tried very hard to draw up a constitution. And before the, constituent, the first constituent assembly was dissolved, almost 85, if not 90% of the work had been completed. And uh, there were only two major outstanding issues, which was one was the federal structure of Nepal and the sharing of powers between the president and the prime minister. This was really a major achievement. And in many ways, uh, the constituent assembly was remarkable in that it was a very diverse and well elected uh, constituent assembly. Women were very well represented in the constituent assembly and it had worked very well together. It's a real pity that they were unable to complete their task. Certainly to complete the task, the most immediate uh, need is to have these new constituent assembly elections and to complete the task and to give Nepal a constitution. Without a constitution, you are a nation, but not a state. Right. And I think that uh, the, the difficulty is that Nepal, the people of Nepal are very proud, happy, pluralistic people. They have many ethnicities, many religions, many languages, many cultures, but they have always lived very well together. And now this, uh, this uh, unity is becoming fractured. They are proud of their democracy, but democratic institutions are weakening day by day without an, uh, a constituent assembly, without a completed constitution. And I think that uh, all people would agree that uh, uh, the way in which the first constituent assembly has worked, certainly with that sense of unity, if the new constituent assembly works together, 6,000 people have filed their nomination. Yes. And about 10% of them are, are women. And, uh, you know, there, but there is a very fractured polity, as we have seen. In the Madhesh region, there's a complete fracture, multiplicity of parties, multiplicity of candidates. Um, then you see, of course, there's the uh, boycott uh, party, the what is called the Dashist Communist Party, the CPN Dash M. Um, and they are now trying to prevent the elections from being held by yeah. calling a band. But I think that, you know, uh, bands and hartals and violence induced to enforce bands are rapidly becoming unpopular. And we saw in, we have seen in Nepal that the violence has been caused because uh, people are fed up. They want to defy the band. And so there is violence by the people who want to enforce the band. Okay. But I think the, the army and the police will certainly be able to hold the nation together and ensure that free and fair elections are held. The Election Commission has also assured that the problems about the, um, the voter identity cards will be solved and everybody will be able to get that on time. Okay. So we certainly hope that the elections will be held as promised and as scheduled. Okay. Uh, we are just about six days time for the elections to go. I, Yubraj, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, Yubraj, you know, that, that, that was a very uh, optimistic uh, Veena Sikri there. 
are you are you are you also as optimistic as as she is? Do you think yeah, that no, the election? I, 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 I realize things look very different and optimistic from distance. But here, yes, uh, the election day is very close, 19th on the Berlin today, so 13th. There are all preparations going on, and Nepal, uh, you know, the uh, uh, security deployment uh, this time is, is far, far greater than any any time in the past. About 200,000, you know, like combined, uh, Nepal Army, uh, armed police force, that's the only paramilitary force, Nepal police and all that. But uh, then uh, the other fact is, uh, it's perhaps far from uh, truth that in the political parties in the first council assembly were able to vote or agree on 90% of the, you know, like, uh, features or ingredients of the constitution. Yes, on certain issues, not the constitution assembly, but the leaders of the is to some sort of conditional agreement. If you agree to this, I'll agree to this. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is, not a document of conditional consensus understanding. They haven't, the constituent assembly didn't have you know, even a single meeting to discuss any of the findings or recommendation of the thematic committee. Right. So, you know, it was, Every name, the House died in futility, in the, except that the thematic committees came to some, came out with certain recommendations which were to have distributed among the people, and people were to, uh, were expected to give their suggestion. Their suggestions, along with the recommendation of the thematic committee, was to go to the full house, which the full house was to take into account all these recommendations from the people, and that was to be referred to the Constitution Committee, which was to draft the Constitution, nothing of the sort happened. The Constitution Committee didn't meet even once. So the Social Party are saying, to, no, I, I want to make two things clear. One, the same political actors are saying, you know, we'll give you the Constitution. But they are also saying now, without the bond that the group coming or participating in the process, Constitution will not be ready. So these are, these are a mixed reaction or mixed messages they are giving and there are, there are anger, there are frustration, but they also believe that in democracy elections is very, very necessary. I mean, they are facing one more election. So, but Nepal would be the first country in the world to have two consecutive elections for the constituent assembly. Right. Right, uh, Yuraj, Yuraj, you think yeah. that you, you think that the international the, the pressure of the international community is more to go ahead with it. You think that they, uh, they, you could have waited and brought about more consensus, got all the parties to 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 to, to join the elections instead of this kind of boycott. You know, even the international community is almost the close to 2006 in Nepal's internal politics. Why international, uh, and yeah, it was the international community that perhaps worked on adding the chief justice, uh, the executive head, to conduct the election thinking, you know, a government headed by the chief justice would be fair. But they were perhaps not aware of the pitfalls or ill effect uh, or the loss of independence of judiciary, you know, when if the same person heads the judiciary and executive, we are facing it. Not a single, not a single decision of the cabinet that has been referred or not a single petition challenging the uh, constitutionality of the government has been, you know, that disposed so far. So, they, you know, that they, they're also feeling that in a country which is in the, which is still going through conflict or in a suspended conflict phase, we need an effective and independent judiciary. Otherwise, this will increase the tendency of people going to the street for violence. Is there? So, right. you know, what Nepalese are facing and what the international community understands, the international community has a limited vision about, and they believe that mere conduct of elections will solve all the problems okay. that Nepal is facing today, and it will bring back to the track, which I beg to defer. Okay. Uh, Professor Goshal, you, you think that, uh, you know, these this elections under these circumstances, it will be held next week, and you think it, it will bring about legitimacy to this to the new constituent assembly? You know the way the violence continues in the country, 
and the way some of the smaller parties as well as that uh, splinter group, Maoist group, has been declaring strikes and calling for transport strikes. And buns and, and, buns and other things. I have my doubts whether the elections could be held or could not. be held at all. <coughs> Under the circumstances, of course, <coughs> even if it is held, I don't think it can bring about much stability within the country immediately. Although there is a consensus that the only way Nepal could be brought out from this economic mess is to hold an election, bring about political stability within the country. But I think there are two things one has to keep in mind before one talks about elections or democracy in that country. You know, uh, Vina Sikri has already mentioned about a fractured polity. Yes. You know, 27 ethnic groups, 127 spoken languages, scores of caste formations, and three different ecosystems within the country has really long divided the country into a blinding feuding communities where consensus is hardly uh, possible uh, right at this moment. Now in this kind of a thing where there's so much of identity politics, in fact one of the things that I believe particularly is that identity politics is practically wrecking all the democracies, it, emerging it, democracies in South Asia. Identity politics, is it new? Is, is, has it come it's, about it's, in it's, the last 10, 8, 10 years or you know, is no, it something which, is, which they have lived with? No, it, there is, but you know, their apparent manifestation at this moment in a situation where you really require certain amount of consensus about the basic objectives of the state. You know, there the identity politics to my mind plays a divisive role. And you know, second thing also about this talk about democracy. Now it has become a fashion for each and every country to say that we have gone back to democracy without really laying the foundation, at least, you know, certain creating certain institutions, certain consensus. You know, when I look at the history of other democracies, I mean, the democracies which have tried, you know, I'm suddenly reminded also about this kind of controversy that happened in Indonesia right. in 19, in the 50s where the Constituent Assembly, they couldn't really decide on what kind of a state they would go for, whether it would be a secular state or an Islamic state, whether there could be federalism or could be unitary state. And because there was no consensus, ultimately President Sukarno disbanded the Constituent Assembly and then established his guided democracy. Right. And wherever you will see democracy has succeeded, like in the case of India, you will see that there is a certain amount of consensus, right. at least in the constant assembly. Right. They may have differed on the niceties and the various forms, yes. but at least the basic objective that there has to be a structure which can unite the country and which actually dedicates itself for the welfare of the people. And that particular consensus... That, that basic consensus you don't consensus find Consensus is missing in Nepal to my mind at this moment. And in fact, you know, again, the historical in a context that any society which has come from a authoritarian kind of a political structure and has stepped into democracy, you know, there is always, you know, violence has always followed yeah. them. Like what you see in the Arab Spring, in Egypt and many other societies. Right. General Mehta, what is it? You think that the Nep Nepal will be able to come out of it? He, you know, Vina Zikri is very optimistic, but the, the other, no, look, other two of my, you know, look, I, I think no, how... These, these elections, do you think, will be will be able to? Uh, he, Mr. Uh, Professor Goshal expresses doubts about being held. Being two held or three to. things we have to remember: the country is transforming from a feudal monarchy into a multi-party, a genuine multi-party democracy. It has there has been a ten-year civil war which has been fought. Yes, the political <laughs> landscape has changed completely. You have a new set of actors, political actors on the scene. Who are these new set of actors? These are the Maoists, now split in two different groups. The one which believes that you have to capture power through the barrel of the gun and the others are what I call the transformed Maoists, the converted Maoists, the democratized, the democratized Maoists. Maoists. And the other lord, the Baidya group, which are called the Dash Maoists, and the others are the cash Maoists, they are unhappy. They are un unhappy not so much about the political system. They are unhappy that they have not got A, the cash, and B, the perks. 
they have been left out of the system. So that's one part we have to understand that you are seeing not just a post-conflict, but a post-revolutionary state. That's number one. Number two, that elections have to be held. And I do not know anywhere where you can have a 100 plus percent free and fair election. Nepal has been without a legitimate government now for a couple of months and a government which was in a quandary, uh, Baburam Bhattarai's government, for almost a year. Now, how long, how long are you going to wait for consensus? Where do you get consensus? I want to ask you, where uh, there is no doubt that people want an election. There, there is consensus There is no alternative. That. But where there is no consensus is that should the 33 party alliance led by Mohan Baidya be part of this? There was plenty of time for this group to be part of this, uh, uh, the alliance, or so-called the group that uh, agrees to the election. <coughs> they chose first to split from the Maoists. Second, they chose to stay away from the elections. And it's a good question, question to ask, why have they stayed away from the elections? Because, why? Because you know, they, they, yeah. they, they feel because that these elections no, will the, not be free, the, free the, and fair. The, the third point that I make is, I don't think, violence, you know, uh, somebody just mentioned that there has been a lot of violence. There hasn't been a lot of violence. In fact, you will see violence during the last two days of the elections. That is the time, if at all, that you will try and prevent, you meaning the Baidya group and the 33, the, really the Baidya group, they will try and prevent these people from going and casting, casting their, their ballot. So at the end of the day, the question that really arises is that are you going to wait for these people to have a round table conference? Even now, six days from the elections, the president of Nepal is telling Mr. Regmi, the caretaker prime minister, please talk to these people and get them on board. How they can be brought they can on be board with just is a six, very different... Uh, with just six yeah. days to go. Uh, Veena Sikri, yeah. one of the things which uh, which has been a problem is that Justice uh, Regmi has refused to resign. And it, you know, it is also said that he has, he, has the, he, has, he has been able to withstand and resist those demands for resignation because of the support which he is getting from the international community including India, US and UN and all. You think that, you know, that, that should have been allowed, um, you, you think that if he had resigned as the Chief, chief Justice, they would, this, this would have been a better elections? Um, let me say first of all that uh, my optimism, which you have referred to, is really born out of sheer necessity. As General Ashok Mehta said, there is no alternative to elections because these very sensitive and important issues in a fractured society that you have in Nepal today can only be decided through the constituent assembly. And I agree with you that yes, uh, as the Chief Justice uh, Regmi, there could have been other options. I don't want to pass judgment on that since I don't know the full details of what each side is arguing about. But having said that, now that we are six days away from the elections, let the elections take place and most things will fall into place after that. I think that um, uh, Chief Justice Regni has a few months to go in his uh, tenure in the Supreme Court and perhaps that is one of the items of concern and so on. But you know, these are um, personnel matters and I don't think they should come in the way of holding the election. And I don't see how that issue should be allowed to affect uh, or stop the elections in any way. Because postponing the elections is not going to help the disaffection among the people who are boycotting the polls. Uh, postponing the elections is not going to prevent calling of more hartal and more band and more violence on the streets. So no situation is going to be helped by postponing the elections. On the other hand, the biggest uh, problem that Nepal is facing of not having a constitution, that process will get back on track 
we hope after the elections and the constituent assembly is elected people will come together there may be a fractured mandate there may be no one group which will have uh, a big say in the elected constituent assembly but maybe that will help in creating a constitution that everybody accepts okay. and allowing pakistan to get uh, allowing nepal to get along uh, with its full statehood and uh, concentrate on economic development and prosperity and education and gender issues which are all very important uh, to okay. the social okay uh, yeah. you brought you brought you know professor goshal in fact was expressing doubts about the holding of elections itself you you think those doubts are uh, are no more valid no uh, yeah i i i won't say that they, that's completely invalid doubt in fact there are many doubts being expressed in nepal one of the you know like biggest i mean one of the pen columnists today who is a great protagonist of the election wrote in his column today in a in a daily newspaper that uh, you know now it seems elections are going to take place <laughs> in nepal it's so it's you know like uh, i think you know that because people are questioning uh, there are two three questions people have raised and this you know leader has been facing this questions when they go to the people but what is the guarantee that the same actors that you know who failed to get the constitution last time in the constituent assembly it was elected for two years but you extended the staff for four years did you didn't give the constitution what the guarantee will be given today another and, thing another thing yeah, uh, yeah, sorry sorry yeah, uh, ibraj yeah, another yeah. thing is you know how legitimate will this will this newly elected constituent assembly be are there doubts being so raised about its legitimacy it will definitely it is its legitimacy will definitely come into question because there are chances of this house being more fragmented and hung than it was last time and political parties or the actors are more divided than they were last time <laughs> and they have shown that you know they are not very used to uh, becoming flexible and come to some kind of understanding on the features of the constitution but yuvraj ji so agar mai if i may add one point here for yuvraj yes. ji yes that's yes, yes, yes. actually a credit one second yuvraj yes. yuvraj one second let vina vina sikri wants okay. to intervene yes okay. I, yes i would like to just uh, discuss with yuvraj ji this point because i think a fractured constituent assembly may not come in the way of constitution making a fractured parliament that can create a problem in creating a stable government but you know a fractured constituent assembly may actually strengthen some democratic institutions uh, yeah, you know, uh, dr goshal was casting doubt on some democratic yeah, institutions but they will be strengthened yeah. in a constituent assembly yeah. yes ibrahim yes specifically yes, yes. we I mean, you know like last time also it was constituent assembly come parliament but in constituent assembly the members did behave differently they you know they, they behave exactly in the same manner as they behaved in parliament so that's why i said there's no guarantee that they will behave differently yeah i agree there is no guarantee we are talking we are we are talking about you know like absence of constitution uh, will lead to the legitimacy and the you know like question being question that's exactly where the problem began in 2006 because in that euphoric moment when the when the parliament was revived these factors they kill the existing constitution without having you know they didn't even suspend process they kill the constitution they created vacuum and they started the onward journey which didn't lead to anywhere the problem had began from there and they, it had been addressed at all it cannot you know like because they it, these questions were raised last time and about baitia yes but they were good for boycott the election which is unfortunate that the point is baitia is also part of the insurgency that led to entire political change and if an important component of that insurgency is out of the process it will have an effect on both in the peace process as well as the political process in fact that is the fear we have in nepal no in fact uh, in fact yubraj the cpn and dash maoist they are saying that without without them being part of the process you know the the, the constitution the, the the making of the constitution itself will have no legitimacy you think you think that they are they are, they are overrating their, themselves or is this something which the people of nepal agree with you know if if the if the constitution uh, if the election to the constitution uh, constitution assembly is a is an exercise towards asserting and owning the sovereignty by the people in an ideal situation all sides should be given a space 
You know, Giris, I want to make a point. Why India succeeded in that manner in bringing the constitution was, despite Nehru's differences with the likes of Sarva Prasad Mukherjee, yes. and within his party with Patel and Rajan Prasad and even Ambedkar, they used to work together. I Where think you excluded all other, or you are excluding the forces you are dealing with. Absolutely. That's why constitution making becomes very, very difficult here. I, I, I think Baladas Goshal also made that point that fundamental consensus which is necessary that seems to be lacking in Nepal. Uh, General Ashok Mehta, yes. You know, at the end of the day, whatever objections people may have, whether you will get a constitution at the um, after this election, we have to remember that if nothing else, you will have a legitimate government. You have an illegitimate government today or a caretaker government. So you will have a legitimate government and I have, you see, we have to understand why Baidya group stayed out of this. I have absolutely, you know, their, if you were to meet their conditions, their conditions were a round table and resolve the issues One which were to be resolved in the CA. I think so how Yubraj, the hell are you going to be I able think to Yubraj do that? wants to. Yes, Yubraj. No, in Nepal's case, what makes a, you know, what makes a government, what makes certain decisions legitimate? It is the endorsement by the international, country, uh, international community, nothing more. No government in the past has been guided by the provision of the constitution it is. And, yes. and even the exit yeah. of the monarchy, even the evolution yes. of the monarchy on the first day, you know how it happened? A government which was not legitimate, a government which had not been taken work, a, a prime minister which had not even been elected, his minister who was supposed to enter the constitutional assembly because he had lost the poll, he went there in capacity of home minister, although there was no government in the day. And he moved the resolution and speaker adopted. And the international community said, okay, you know, like Nepal is a republic. So when you compromise on the co process from day one, and this, this is where you lead the country to. Okay. The, yeah, but I think, I, in the past, okay. I, I think, think at this point, if the elections are not held, at this well, point. The constitution of this package is all over. Okay. Yes, but, that's true, but at this point, if the elections are not held, it will lead to an indefinite stalemate. Okay. But, and so, it will be very so, difficult to get out of it. That okay. is why it's very important for the elections to okay, be held. Okay, so, Goshal, very quickly, last words to uh, I think uh, you, in any democracy, constitution is the most important Absolutely. aspect. Without that, you cannot really yes. practice democracy. Right. And I think there is a difference between parliament and constituent assembly. Right. Because constituent assembly dwells on basic principles and ideological basis of the state. Whereas well, parliament well, is a different thing altogether. Yes. Now, so long you don't have a consensus on that particular aspect. You know, when I say Getting that, Getting a legitimate government, uh, well, would be government difficult. Be difficult. would be I difficult. Think, I think on that note, we need to end. We completely run out of time. Uh, we will we will wait and watch. We have six six more days to go. If the elections are held, how it will how it will all pan out. Thanks to all my guests, Veena Sikri, Yubraj Gibre from Kathmandu, Major General Ashok Mehta, and Professor Baladas Goshal. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in Big Picture same time tomorrow.